primeiramente temos a showrunner de The Witcher, Lauren Hiswick. Uma salva de palmas, por favor. E agora, é claro, o nosso Geralt of Rivia, Henry Cavill. Por favor, também uma salva de palmas. Guys, thank you so much for being here. And let's jump right into The Witcher, right? Let's do it. So, were you fans of the book before the start of this show? <laughs> um, yeah, I had read The Last Wish about a year before uh, Netflix decided to make the show, and I was madly in love with it. Um, I didn't know that I was going to do this, um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, a, it's a great book. Um, Henry's story about the books is a little bit more interesting. <laughs> uh, yes is the short answer. The long answer is I was, I've been a PC gamer my entire life and a fan of the fantasy genre in general. Mm -hmm. My dad would read fantasy books to me before I could read, and ever since I have been able to read, so about the age of 25 onwards, I've been reading my own books. <laughs> and um, I knew The Witcher from the games. And then I met Lauren, and Lauren told me that there were a series of books as well which the games were based upon. I had no idea about that. I figured, because all the books had the artwork from the games on there, and so I just figured they were stories related to the games. I was wrong. So I read the books and um, absolutely loved them. The world that Sapkowski created was, abs and still is, absolutely incredible. And... Uh, it just made me fall even deeper in love with The Witcher and with Geralt. And what makes The Witcher different from other fantasy dramas? I think what makes it different is that there... Certainly with Geralt, there's a, a dichotomy to who he is. He is this white knight on the inside, and on the outside, he is presenting something which is quite the opposite. And I know in pop culture it's very popular to have um, anti-hero characters now and characters who are actually quite mischievous and, and th there's a lot of fun to them. And Geralt is actually just a different access point to the White Knight character who, uh, I'm not saying has fallen out of favor, but is probably um, at the moment people are going, I want to see someone be a bit bad mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Geralt never enjoys being bad, but he always ends up in that scenario despite the fact that he's trying to be a white knight. Yeah. And for me, that makes for a very, very interesting, interesting character to follow. Um, I would say the other thing that to me really separates uh, The Witcher from other fantasy properties is that um, it, fantasy can be really earnest at times because it does deal with such big themes, politics and family and battles and, you know, so it has a tendency to always be very dramatic. And The Witcher is, has those moments, but is also incredibly funny. Because The Witcher isn't just about the important special people in the world, it's about everyone else as well. So it's about people getting up in the mornings and having to do their jobs and just keep putting one foot in front of the other no matter what's happening next door. Um, and I think when you look at how real people deal with difficult situations, it's with humor. And we play into that as much as we can. And Henry, what was like working on the series and shooting so many different remote locations and working with Netflix? Absolutely incredible. I mean, can I just say, you have the most incredible hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only just I'm saw that. I was out. like, I'm I out. am fully distracted right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 the locations, location work is actually uh, one of my favorite things to do. I love location work. And Andrew, our designer, was absolutely amazing. He created the most extraordinary sets, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Fa thankful for that. But I do enjoy going on locations because there's something about having a connection with the real world that helps my mind be transported fully into whatever imaginary realm I'm existing in at the time. And uh, there's some wonderful moments in episode six where we are traveling through, I'm, I'm just gonna say scenery for now in the Canary Islands, I don't wanna give anything away. Uh, but I, it was very easy for me to transport myself 
to that place emotionally and psychologically. Great. And Lauren, how was the creative writing pro uh, process for bringing this fantasy world to series? Um, I mean, it was amazing. It was incredibly challenging because obviously there is so much material. There are eight books total. It's like 3,000 pages of material. Yeah. And we wanted to create a show that would not only um, pay, sort of honor the existing fans, because obviously the reason we're making this show is because so many people love the world of The Witcher so much. Um, so we have fans and we want them to feel honored, but we also want to surprise and excite them. And then we want to introduce a new audience to The Witcher as well. So for myself, and um, I have a writing staff of six other people and then four support staff. And we sit in a room um, all day with snacks and mm -hmm. basically decide how best to tell stories. And, um, you know, there are a couple of things that I knew that I wanted to do, a couple of the short stories. The Lesser Evil is my favorite, which is why we start with it. The um, best. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, there are things that we knew that fans would want to see. There were other stories that we thought would best tell the stories of Geralt, Jennifer, and Siri. And then we basically just, for 20 weeks, um, that's how long we wrote the eight episodes for, we banged our heads against the wall a lot <laughs> and then had a season of television. <laughs> that's great. And Henry, you mentioned uh, you see Geralt as a white knight. So do you think Geralt is essentially good? Absolutely. Geralt is essentially good. It's a matter of perspective. And that's the most interesting thing about the world of The Witcher and what Sapkowski created, is that everyone is a hero of their own story. And if you look at that hero's story from an outside perspective, that hero may be a villain. And that is the interesting thing. Yes, Geralt is 100% a white knight and wants to do the right thing, but if you were to turn up at the aftermath of him doing the right thing and just see bodies everywhere, you may not think he's a hero. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. More than likely not. In fact, that's what everyone thinks. <laughs> Only Geralt thinks he's a hero. And Lauren, we saw some powerful, powerful scenes back there in the panel, which was amazing. Uh, can you talk a little bit about those scenes? Absolutely. You know, um, uh, Henry already mentioned Andrew Laws, who is our production designer. Um, so we knew that, obviously, the continent is a very big place. We start off the entire season in Blaviken and in Sintra, but we knew there were so many places that we wanted to go. Um, and uh, Brooklawn is one of my favorite places. Um, we shot that fully in the Canary Islands, um, mm -hmm. but we created the Dryads, which was really incredible. Um, you know, I, I said this in the panel, but I do think that the show has a little bit of everything in it. When people ask me to describe it, I'm like, well, it's an adventure, well, it, but also romance, and there's some monsters, so it's a little bit horror now and then, and it's an epic, heroic tale. It, it's a little bit of everything, and that's why we chose those specific clips. Mm -hmm. um, the Yennefer one, as I said, is really powerful and, and deep, but I want people to know that that's in the show as well. So, uh, since you mentioned Yennefer, I'd like to add uh, another, another question. Because uh, in the books, uh, Jennifer's backstory was only uh, talked a little bit, but never showed. And you, you created this for the show, for the series. So how was the process of writing this amazing character? It was so much fun. So I'm, um, I, I love Jennifer. Um, there's a lot of me in Jennifer, or a lot of Jennifer in me. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> But uh, basically, the writers and myself went through all of the books, and we basically highlighted passages, um, everything that was said about Yennefer and her backstory. And then we took all of those pieces of information and crafted it into a whole story. Because I do think that, um, to me, a character who is the most powerful character in, in the universe isn't very interesting. I mm -hmm. need to know what her vulnerabilities are. I need to know what her soft spots are. I, to me, that's when, when eventually she meets Geralt, and they poke at each other. I understand why and, and what's happening underneath the surface for her. Um, I loved bringing life to that character a little bit more. Yeah, she's amazing. I'd like to add another question just, uh, just before we got to the journalists. Uh, so both of you met with Sapkowski, and how was this experience? Um, I first met Andre in Poland. Um, I went there right after I sold the series. I went to Poland um, and did a research trip. And he and I sat down and had lunch and uh, some vodka, um, <laughs> uh, just a wee bit. Um, and, you know, we barely even talked about The Witcher that, in that trip. What I really want to know is why, what made him want to write, what it was about him. Um, I think every writer pours themselves into their material. So I wanted to see what parts of him were in the book, what was important to him. Um, and I did pitch him my angle on um, telling these stories. 
and he seemed very excited, but then has basically requested, he, hasn't, he actually hasn't seen any of the episodes yet. Um, he gave me this great analogy, which is that he said he doesn't want to see the ingredients um, of the soup. He doesn't want to see the groceries. He just wants mm -hmm. to taste it when it's done. And so he's going to be watching it with everyone else on December 20th, and I <laughs> cannot wait. And you, Henry? For me, I, I met Mr. Sapkowski uh, very briefly on set, and I was about to do a, I think it was 15, 20 foot fall through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a little bit focused on that at the time. And uh, the first thing he said to me was, I didn't write this, it's not my fault. It's <laughs> <laughs> this isn't me. Uh, and then by the time I had finished the, finished the stunt and finished focusing on that, he was actually on a tour of the studio at the time. And so uh, I, my meeting with him was brief, but, but enjoyable. And I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say about the show.